veterinary research team from the Department of Veterinary Tropical Diseases, Faculty of Veterinary Science, University of Pretoria, and the Institute of Tropical Medicine, Antwerp, is sampling blood from cattle and buffaloes in the KwaZulu-Natal region of South Africa. Trypanosomosis, a disease transmitted by tsetse flies, is a major problem in large parts of the KwaZulu-Natal region. Was looking at the distribution and epidemiology of the disease at this Schlusslue uh, interface. And we hope that through this project we'll get sufficient information to update, to improve um, strategic trypanosomiasis control in this area. This disease is often referred to by the local people as Nagana. The researchers came to the area to examine the disease situation in buffaloes and cattle at the wildlife livestock interface of the Chuklui Umfolosi Park. They have sampled blood from buffaloes in the park and from cattle outside the park to determine the presence of the parasites and want to compare the trypanosomes isolated from both animal species to establish their relationship. In doing so, they can determine the threat posed by infected buffaloes to livestock kept at the edge of the park. Uh, so we're bringing in um, some of the tools, molecular tools, epidemiological tools that have been developed in Antwerp and we use those tools to clarify the situation here in South Africa, but we also have projects in Zambia and we have projects in, in Malawi and Mozambique. Bovine trypanosomosis is caused by several trypanosome species, which are protozoan blood parasites. They are transmitted by various tsetse fly species of which the Morsitans group, or savanna tsetse flies, are very important in sub-Saharan Africa. Tsetse flies infest large tracts of land in southern, east, west and central Africa, referred to as the fly belt. Wherever tsetse flies are present, it is almost impossible to farm with cattle. The flies are therefore regarded by many as the guardians of the environment against overgrazing by livestock. Various wildlife species such as African buffaloes, kudus and warthogs can be infected with trypanosomes without becoming sick. Since these wildlife species are usually present in large numbers in conservation areas, they act as subclinical reservoirs of these blood parasites. The parasites are transmitted to cattle that graze in close proximity to wildlife areas infested by tsetse flies. Cattle can also act as a source of infection for these blood-sucking flies. Tsetse flies have a peculiar life cycle, which includes giving birth to larvae which subsequently pupate and develop into a fly. In contrast to other flies which lay eggs and therefore may have hundreds or thousands of offspring, this fly will only give birth to one offspring every nine or ten days. The researchers are using mice as a live test tube. To obtain trypanosomes for further research, the parasites need to be isolated from wildlife and livestock. Therefore, blood from an infected animal is injected into the mice. Trypanosomes will grow in them and will then be isolated and further investigated using molecular techniques. Chronically infected cattle become emaciated and weakened because of the progressing anemia and the undulating fever. Especially highly productive cattle breeds or working animals such as draft oxen can show severe clinical signs and are unable to work or produce efficiently. Trypanosomosis can be controlled by targeting the trypanosome parasite, the vector, or both. Clinically affected cattle can be treated with different trypanocidal drugs, 
which can have therapeutic or prophylactic actions. Resistance to all drugs currently available is hampering this control method. Much research has gone into developing of methods to control tsetse flies. Tsetse flies can be captured using specially designed traps, but a lot of effort has gone into cheap and simple methods of killing the flies by exploiting some typical aspects of the tsetse's behavior. Tsetse flies are attracted by components of ox breath and urine and objects of a specific shape and color. They are especially attracted by a particular shade of blue, but will also settle more often on black objects. This knowledge has led to the development of the target technology to control the flies. And in the case of a target, the shape is obviously the shape of, of a host animal, of, of a cow for example, and, and the color which attracts, really attracts sets of flies is the blue. So the blue has been placed in the middle, the tetsu fly is very much attracted by the blue, but will sit on the black. And it's the black that will be treated with insecticide and kills the tetsu fly. Certain components of the urine and certain components of the breath of an ox attract tetsu flies. And it's those components, the urine components that are uh, in this little sachet, and it's the odor that is found in its acetone, which is found in the bottle here. It depends a bit on the tetsu species, but for, for example, a very common savanna species of tetsu fly, you only need four of those per square kilometer to control the flies. This method of control has been very successful in southern Africa. In addition, by treating cattle with insecticides, they themselves can act as effective mobile targets to control the flies. Notwithstanding these effective control methods, the disease continues to pose a serious threat, particularly to rural livestock production systems in large parts of Africa. Control of trypanosomosis in livestock will have great economic benefits and will contribute substantially to a reduction in poverty. It will require not only controlling tsetse flies in extensive areas, but also dealing with the infection in livestock and in important wildlife reservoirs, such as buffaloes. <laughs>